I have here a simple series resistor circuit. Our power comes in from the positive of the source, through the jumper, through R1, through R2, through R3, through the jumper, and back through the source. There's only one path for current to flow, so it is a series circuit. R1 is 12K, R2 is 1K, and R3 is 8.2K. What we're going to do today is look at how to properly take voltage current and resistance readings on the series circuit. So let's start with resistance. The first resistor is 12K. So on my meter, I want to go to 40K. You always want to set your meter up higher than what you're reading. The proper way to read a resistor is make sure that one terminal is out of the circuit. It doesn't have polarity, so we can hook up our leads any way we want to. And R1 is measuring 11.9K. Well, with intolerance of the 12K. So I'll go ahead and put the terminal back in. I'll break the terminal of R2, which is supposed to be 1K. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my meter down to 4K. It gives me a more accurate reading. And I'll hook my meter up. And we see that R1, is, or I'm sorry, R2 is 0.992K, or 992 ohms. Put the terminal back in. And I will pull out the third terminal for R3. Hook up my meter. Now, R3 is 8.2K. So since I didn't change my meter reading, it's going to show overload. So I'm going to have to go back up to the next highest reading. And we see that R3 is supposed to be 8.2K, and it's 8.08K. So that is a little bit low, but it's still within the tolerance range. So I'll go ahead and put my terminal back in. And now I want to read our total. If I add the three resistors up, I should get 21.2K. Now this is very important that when you go to measure our total, that you make sure that you pull the source out of the circuit because the source does have internal resistance. So I'll go ahead and click one and clip the other one and I end up with 20.99 K ohms and I should be at 21.2. So again all my resistors were a little low so my reading is going to be a tiny bit low. So let me go ahead and put my source back in. Let's get ready for the next step. Now that we've done our resistance readings, let's go ahead and take our voltage readings. I've already set my source voltage up for 5 volts and have it connected and powered up. I want to take my meter and set it to 40. And I want to measure my source voltage, make sure that it is 5 volts. This lead here is connected to my negative terminal, so I'm going to take my negative of my meter and connect it here. And this is connected to the positive of my source, so I'll go ahead and connect it right here. And I'm reading 5.08 volts. Now if I was to reverse these leads, I would still get the same voltage reading, but I would have a negative sign there, as you indicated right there. That just means current is going in the opposite direction than the way we have our meter set up. So our voltage total is good. Now let's go ahead and measure our individual voltages across the resistors. Now voltage remains the same in a parallel. So I'm going to hook my meter up, my positive lead closest to the positive source, and my negative lead to the other side of the resistor. And I see that I have 2.88 volts dropped across that resistor. Measuring R2, clip it on one side of the resistor. Again, keeping my red closest to the positive source and clipping the other lead, and I see I've got 0.23 volts. Now again, because I am below my next lowest setting, which is 4, I can't turn my meter down to get a more accurate reading, which is 0.24. So I'm going to go to my next resistor, and I want to turn my meter back up. And again, I want my positive lead closest to the positive source. So I will collect, connect my positive lead on that side of the resistor and the negative on the other one. 
and across R3 I have 1.95 volts. Now I had done the math previously and this is pretty close to what the math shows. Now that we've finished measuring resistance and voltage, let's go ahead and measure our current. Now current remains the same in a series circuit. So that means that anywhere that I test current in this circuit, it should be the same. Now, when you don't know what your current is, you always want to start your meter up at your highest value. So I'm going to go ahead and break the circuit and place my meter where the break is at. Again, positive close to the positive terminal and my negative closer to the negative terminal. I'm going to skip the jumper and connect directly up to the resistor and I see I have 0.2. So I'm going to go ahead and move my meter down to 400 and I have 242 milliamps. Now I did calculate this before and I had 238 should have been what I read. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back in and then I'm going to come over here in between R1 and R2. I'll break the circuit and I'll go ahead and put my meter in. Now again I should have the same 241 milliamps and I do 241, 242. Go ahead and put R2 back in the circuit. And I'll break the circuit in between R2 and R3. Check my positive lead here, my negative here, and again 242. Put the circuit back together, and then the last one I'll break it here at the negative terminal. Connect my positive up to the resistor, my negative to the negative terminal, and again, I've got 242 milliamps of current flowing through this resistor. So that's how we take our measurements for current. So all the measurements that you can't take with the circuit are now complete.